let's try this now. How about now? Do I have audio now? Now would be a good time to have audio. All right. Hmm. Okay, good. Well, what you missed me saying was that I had reinstalled all of my audio software about seven minutes ago. So that's going to be my excuse on why I was coming in with no audio. So yeah. Um, yes, these are cool. The, okay. Let me, let me show off my cool new glasses. Sorry, God, podcast people. You'll just have to bear with this. Look, look, they are a bunch of tiny dinosaurs wearing Santa hats. Yes. Super fun. All right. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I haven't decided if I'm going to wear them on Saturday yet or wear something else on Saturday. I'm doing a interview on a live stream with World Anvil, which you should all totally come and see. Uh, it is at 9 p.m. in Greece and 2 p.m. Pacific and I'm sorry, 2 p.m. Eastern and 11 a.m. Pacific. So sort to do your math from there. Um, and I'm, I'll be talking about query letters. So, uh, so please come and join me. But Janice, who is hosting, uh, that Janice, uh, world anvil. Um, I don't even know, like, does she have a title? She's just Janet of world anvil. I don't know if she has an actual title anyway. Um, she is also big into dinosaurs like I am. So we might have a, a fun dinosaur chat if I wear my, my glasses. I don't know. It's a little late for Christmas, but yeah. Anyway, it's a little late for Christmas, but it's never too late for dinosaurs. Yeah, I know the dinosaurs aren't really visible unless I get up and creep on the camera a little bit like, hi. So, um, so I'll probably do something else, but I, I did make sure that, um, when we were on a, a zoom meeting, I did lean close to the camera so that Janet could see my dinosaurs. So at least I got that mission accomplished. So, all right. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Oh, is the music okay level? Uh, now that you can actually hear me, can you hear me and the music, but not too much music? This is where we are. Um, so, uh, it is Tuesday the 4th in my world. I think it's probably Wednesday for Grace because she's ahead of the rest of us. Um, <laughs> okay, good. All good. Thanks. Um, hey, dog. Uh, thanks for coming and joining the stream. You are very cold. Your ears are cold. Did you just come in from the great outdoors? All right. Our, we finally had winter hit here. Our winter has been dinking around and not, not showing up, but it's finally now acting like proper winter and, uh, it's getting cold. So it is stinky hot for grace. <laughs> oh, well, it finally, finally cooled off here. So yeah. Um, but you know, you have, you have an annual Christmas beach outing, I think. So, so yeah, you have a distinctly different weather, <laughs> weather pattern than we have. We're getting, um, oh, what is it? It's actually, um, it's going to translate, but I mean, we're below freezing. So I think we're probably hovering around 10 below in Celsius right now ish ish. So, okay. To the point. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Saturday I'll be talking with Janet uh, and um, on the World Anvil Twitch stream about query letters. And tonight I am kind of stream of consciousness. Um, ooh, look, a, an intentional pun. Anyway, um, kind of do a stream of consciousness about the business of creativity because it is New Year's. This is the first Tuesday of the new year as what I was eventually getting to like 20 minutes ago when I started uh, this conversation. Um, and so everybody and their kid brother is doing, you know, this is my new year's writer planner. This is my new year's author career goals. And, and all of these things, my, my feed is, uh, uh, kind of inundated. So only 25 Celsius, but super humid, only 25 Celsius and your ground is boiling. But other than that, it's fine. Yeah. All right. It's boiling less in Auckland, but yeah. Anyway. I'm going to stay on a topic for like two seconds. I really am. Anyway. Um, so I'm just like all of my social media feeds are inundated with, you know, new year's planning and all of these things. And don't get me wrong. Uh, it is very good that we have kind of a built in designated time, uh, to reassess and to plan because frequently we get caught up in, you know, a day to day grind. And it is so easy to just take care of what needs to be done today and not think about, what needs to be done for long-term success or happiness or anything that we want to be doing. 
Uh, so I, I kind of like that we have the, the built-in thing, but I also feel like, um, you know, sometimes there's, I don't want to say too much emphasis on planning, but it's, it's all about, it's all about the plan for this particular definition of success. And that may or may not be what I actually need to be working on. I'm sorry. I'm in a rolling chair and I was just pushed aside by a door thing. <laughs> just sent me on a little walk there. Hi, what are you doing? You never go on this side of the chair. You don't actually fit on this side of the chair. That's why. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, bored dog is very bored. So yeah, so I guess things to look at. Um, I have talked with several people over the last couple of months that I'm, you know, I'm kind of like, okay, you know, I, I, I think part of the reason you might be flailing a little bit, struggling to make decisions is that you don't know actually what you're trying to decide. Like you are, um, you know, you, you, you want X, but you also want Y and they're not necessarily synonymous. Uh, and so I'm going to simplify this to just, um, do you want to be a hobby writer or a career writer? And that's, first of all, not a judgmental question. Um, if your goal is to write awesome stories, you can do that without ever having them published. If your goal is to write awesome stories and share them with people, you can do that without ever having them published. Um, we live in the information age. There's a zillion T ways to share things. Um, and Oh, no, no, no. And don't mail. Stop. No, no. What, what is it with you? What are you doing? What are you doing? You cannot eat my notebook. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. Wow. Super, super bored dog. Okay. Uh, the, the downside of winter finally arriving is the dogs are indoors and Cause there's no squirrels to chase or watch or do things with because you know, they actually went, went off and did squirrel things for the winter. So, okay. <laughs> Where was I going? Um, here, can you hop up in the chair and stop annoying people? Come here. Hop up right here. Come here. Maybe not. Okay. Well, you're just gonna, you, you don't get to go on TV then. I'm sorry. Life's hard. Anyway, age, information age. There's a zillion T ways to share things without trying to make a professional publishing career out of it. And if that is what you want, then that's what you want and it's fine, right? Like, um, you know, I, I, I see people uh, they are stressing about trying to build a newsletter, but they don't actually want to sell anything. So great, then you don't need a newsletter, okay? Um, and, and there's, and it's not, you know, hundred percent black and white. Like maybe, maybe you do want to build a following, uh, as you publish on, you know, Wattpad or, uh, archive of our own or, you know, things like that. That's fine. Um, and if you're writing fanfic, then you're clearly not going to be, you know, publishing professionally, but you might still want to, you know, be in contact with your readers and, you know, there's, there's options out there, right? Um, but I guess my, I just, I think a lot of people have not considered that and, it, and it's so easy to do, especially now, because if you go, you know, I'm going to join a writing group on Facebook. And if you join a writing group on Facebook, um, it's everybody jumbled together. You know, your fan writers, your hobby writers, your professional writers, they're all in the same group. So when people are talking about, well, I really need to get this done. It sounds like everybody who's a writer needs to get that done. Well, no, that's a professional career goal. Uh, as, as opposed to, uh, I need to work on this. Well, that's a fanfic writer goal or, you know, these kinds of things. And, uh, yeah, sorry. That kind of went off on its own, uh, own track there for a bit. Um, but, but yeah, so the, the, where, where I was going with that is, uh, there's no point in making plans and no point in making goals until you know what you're trying to achieve and where you're trying to get to. Uh, so, you know, I can have the best map in the world, but if I don't have a destination, it's not really going to take me where I want to go because I don't know where I want to go. So yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um, so I guess that, that was kind of the first thing I just wanted to throw out there is, you know, make, make decisions. Um, 
and and then you can start making you know more I don't want to say realistic realistic is certainly one aspect of it but I guess more appropriate goals for your ultimate more appropriate short-term goals for your ultimate this is what I consider success goal uh, you know so you know if I'm a hobby writer I probably you don't need to be trying to catch the attention of that Amazon Prime video exec for that major adaptation, right? Like th th that would be a waste of time. Um, and I'm deliberately picking a little bit of an extreme example there. Uh, so then let's say like you are, I do want a professional career as a writer. That is, that is my goal. That is actually what I'm going for. Great. What kind of career? Um, you know, cause these can look like hugely different things. I want to publish a couple of books so that I can hold it and say, look what I did. Um, and I just don't care if anybody outside of my immediate circle knows about it or cares about it. Are you like, I have to support my family on this? Um, are you like, I have to, uh, become the next household name with a media empire worth millions or billions, you know, like, these are all going to be drastically different approaches, um, in, in what you're trying to do. And it can easily become a, again, exact same thing where, you know, people are feeling pressured to do one thing or another thing that may or may not match up with their definition of success because it's somebody else's definition for success. So I know writers who their fiction work is the primary breadwinning income for their household. They have to make very different choices on writing to market, writing at speed, you know, doing all the associated supporting merchandising and those kinds of things, because if they don't, then that's the house payment <laughs> and that's the grocery bill and all of those things. Um, whereas if you have a comfortable day job and you're writing as a hobby, um, sorry, not as a hobby, but as a side hustle, basically, um, then great. You still want to do professional work. You still want to publish professionally, but you have a lot more latitude in, well, I can, uh, write something that's a little bit more, more experimental, or I can put out books a little more slowly or those kinds of things. And again, just, uh, going back to, there was a, a little bit of a Carfluffle is way too strong a word. Uh, I'm going to say misunderstanding. Um, but in one of my groups recently where people were talking and it really just came down to, uh, you know, what, what were people's goals? Are you, um, are you doing this for fun? Are you doing this as some sort of higher calling? Are you doing this because, uh, you want to make money off your writing? You know, are you doing it for all three put together, which is completely possible and also legit? Um, you know, so just, be, you know, be, try to try to be a little bit self-aware because it will make all of your New Year's decisions makings um, better. And then uh, there's there's the thing about comparisons. Ooh. So I was feeling pretty good. I, I got I invested in. Um, oh, let me let me actually go grab a link and share it. Maybe hold on. Look at me not being planned ahead. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I, uh, did a trial run of scribe count, which I first heard about at 20 books to 50 K at the, um, Vegas, Vegas conference at 20 books to 50 K. Um, hold on. Sorry. I can't talk and type at the same time. It's really hard. <laughs> All right. And it's similar to book report, uh, but I liked it better. Now I have lost where I, there we go. I'm going to drop this into the chat. There we go. Scribe count. That is by the way, an affiliate link. So full disclosure. Um, but it has a totally free trial if you want to play with it. Uh, and then it has two tiers of pricing based on how much money you're pulling in as an author, uh, based on your monthly income. Uh, but I liked it because, uh, it's, it's not just Amazon. It pulls in from draft to digital and, uh, a number of other places that I don't remember off the head, top of my head, Kobo and Smashwords and a bunch of things should be pulling in from find voices and Ingram in the near future, which I'm really hoping for. And 
then you can also you know drop in a spreadsheet like all of my sales off my website I you know set that a decent amount of money off my website sale direct sales last year and so I can drop import that uh, directly in there and get everything as a big picture so it's really nice uh, where was I going with this? Oh, so I was looking at all of these things, putting them all together, seeing them all like so many pretty graphs. Uh, is, is Bridger here? Bridger, if you're here, you'll love the graphs. Anyway, um, and uh, I, I was like, oh, oh, I'm doing better than I thought. Like this is this is good. Like I'm I'm actually feeling pretty good about this. Then I jumped onto Facebook and went over to one of my my groups where a lot of uh, so a lot of writers were doing kind of year end assessments and it's. And it's very professional. It's not braggy or anything, but, uh, but you know, people are posting like, this is what I did. This is the difference it made. You know, it's generally inspirational and helpful kind of things. And, uh, and one person's like, yeah, this is my very first year as an author. Uh, I published my very first book in December of, you know, a year ago. And I made $200,000 this year. That's us dollars. And I was just like, Oh, never mind. I'm not cool. <laughs> I'm not doing as well as I thought. Uh, but it's it's so easy to get caught up in those kinds of comparisons. Now we're doing a totally like we're not in the same genres. We're not in the same. I don't care if we're in the same genre or not. I'm sorry. Two hundred dollars is still a lot of money. Is two hundred thousand dollars for your first year is an outlying data point. <laughs> it is atypical. Um, but bravo. Okay. All the all the all the kudos to that person. You know, this is not me being bitter. This is just me saying it's really easy to get caught up in those kinds of comparisons and be like, well, I've been working on this for a lot longer. I've been, you know, what, what am I doing wrong that I'm not having that kind of success? And, um, and you know, it's just not the kind of thing that you can, uh, uh, afford to get wrapped around the axle on because again, there's a, so many different things, uh, that go into that. So, yeah. Anyway, um, let's see, so things that I am working on, um, cause I'm going to go out and mm, when I get done rambling, I'm probably going to, uh, work a little bit on my plans for the new year. Uh, cause I don't, I don't have a built-in reassessment time other than the greater social construct of the new year. So, uh, so it's good. And I know a lot of people who do sit down and do a monthly assessment and things. Those are also the people who tend to have really gorgeous, like bullet journals and beautiful author calendars and all the things. And I just, I just can't, I just, I, I love, I love the way they look and I can't even with it. Nope. Bullet journals. Beautiful. Not for me. Like the idea of sitting down and make one sounds really fun. And then I just, I know I would never maintain it. So yeah, <laughs> anyway, um, but I do have some, some lovely new notebooks and one of my year, uh, new year's resolutions, which I don't actually make new year's resolutions, but if I did, uh, one of them would be to write in the beautiful notebooks, write in the beautiful notebooks. <laughs> this is not normal. We collect notebooks and we hoard them in pristine mint condition. No, I plan to write in the beautiful notebooks and I have several new ones and I'm going to write in the beautiful notebooks. So anyway, um, so yeah, so goals for the new year for me, um, it's just actually, uh, a little bit weird because I did just publish Kin and Kind, which was the fourth in the Shard of Elan tetralogy. And that means that's done. And that feels really, really weird because, uh, it doesn't feel wrong. Like I'm happy about it. But it also feels weird because I've been working on that series. You guys, you don't even know how long I've been working on that series. Like, I think, I think 2004 is when I start, first started writing what became the Shard of Elan. Like that's, that's insane. That's a long time. Um, so good job. Like the series is old enough to vote now or something. <laughs> it's not quite, but it's working on it. Um, it is old enough to drive. Wow. Okay. So, so yeah, so moving on to, and I've always been working on other projects, but now just like leaving that behind and moving on, it's, it, it's, it feels like a bigger cut. So I do have this, the, the poet's eye, uh, to be working on. I'm still trying to make some decisions on exactly how I originally conceived that as a serial, um, not as the, uh, short, short, short serial chapters that are popular right now, 
uh, when I first thought of this, it was some years ago, and the, and then nove series of novellas were actually in vogue, and lots of people were doing that, and that's how I first envisioned that story, and it would work really well as that format. But nobody's doing that now, <laughs> so I have to decide if I want to do that. Um, I can also just make it work as a standard novel, so uh, I'm playing with that a little bit, so that's a thing to do. Um, I did just do... I redid all the tiers on my Patreon. Uh, so for uh, for anybody who wants to check that out, hey, that's there, but no pressure. Um, but I built in uh, some, excuse me, new rewards and I'm, I'm gonna be producing new work each month for that, um, which is really scary for me because I have commitment issues. <laughs> Just, that is why I put off making a Patreon for four years. Um, was just commitment issues. It's exactly, 100%. And then it's like, okay, you know what? If I hit a terrible month, like, you know, I get hit by a bus, you know, my 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 cat dies, you know, whatever. All the things happen. I don't have a cat. But, you know, the, the idea being that if something goes terribly wrong, um, I could actually pause it. So that was my out to get me over my, my commitment issues. Um, so I'm going to sit down and, and make some goals. Um, and I one of the things that I do each month as part of the Patreon is I publicly post what I'm working on that month. And so there's a little bit of, of um, accountability, I guess, where I say this I'm working on. It doesn't always work that great because I posted in November that I was working on a secret project and I posted this month. You know, yeah, still working on that same secret project, obviously not making a lot of headway on it, but uh, it's, it's there, I'm working on it. <laughs> um, so do that. Uh, and so I'll be uh, outlining a little bit more you know, what can I try to do to be more productive? And it's just, um, there's so many benefits to being a rapid release author, which I'm never going to get to be a rapid release author in the way that some people are. Like a lot of people are producing a book every four weeks and I'm sorry, it's not going to happen. Nope. It's not going to happen. Um, and I have the luxury of saying it's not going to happen because this is not my primary grocery bill. I will still have a house to live in if I don't sell a book this month. Uh, and that's real good. So again, so going back to, you know, what are, what are your career, career choices? What are your goals? Um, but yeah, I'm going to try to do uh, a little bit more on how can I move a little bit faster than I typically do and, and then get things rolling in production a little bit faster. Uh, meaning, uh, you know, how can I speed up book covers, you know, audiobook adaptations, you know, all these, all these things that just take time in the timeline and occasionally get bottlenecked. And um, what can I do to get things moving a little bit faster there? Hmm. I should point out, though, that Liz Morey, who did, did uh, my, or did, just just finished Blood and Bond and we'll be starting on Crown and Creed and Kin and Kind. Uh, they were getting me files at the end of the of the year so that we could make the 2021 you know publication date and uh, and they were getting me files and I was listening to them they were getting me files and I was listening to them and uh, so mad props there that was in no way shading my wonderful narrator uh, and it's just honestly sometimes like stuff backs up and that's that's where I was going with that so uh yeah all my all my all my audio review typically happens in the car that's where I am most efficient at it and I stopped driving in 2020 and 2021 my my driving was so much reduced I used to drive what you know 40 40 between 40 and 60 thousand miles a year which is a lot more than the average American and uh and then that just all stopped. So <laughs> yeah, uh, it was, everything slowed down. So anyway, I am, do I have, let me see, give me a second. If you are hanging out here, tell me how you're doing your plans for the new year. Are you a paper notebook person? Do you have a beautiful bullet journal? Do you have a list of post-it notes? Are you a digital mind mapper? 
Hello, Shy Red Fox. Thanks for stopping by. Oh, that's another thing that I should mention. Shy Red Fox organized a VSS collab, a uh, very short story collaboration. Uh, it's on Twitter as VSS collab. And so every day, a bunch of us, and I don't know how many of us are there now, a couple dozen, maybe, I'm not sure, um, who are writing a tweet a day to thread together into short fiction. Uh, so you can follow along uh, at VSS Collab on Twitter, um, or if you follow, if you've got me on Twitter, you can follow the tags back from there. Um, uh, Shy Red Fox is putting her plans in Notion. Good, good. Grace says, I have zero plans. There are 22 of us. Thank you, Shy. Um, 22 people doing the very short, very short stories. Yeah. Um, Grace, Grace, that is not true. You have some plans because. I know you have at least two and a half manuscripts in the pipeline, she said with a arch tone. Um, yeah, you've got, so you, you've got some plans, Grace, and I'm not going to put you publicly on the spot, but I'm just saying, mm, I know you have things. By the way, we kind of want that Pride and Prejudice in space novel, so. So. <laughs> Wait, I didn't count them lately. <laughs> so, um, yay, let's see. Did I look at me like being all organized like an adult? I did complete World Ember. Yeah, see, see, see Pride and Prejudice in Space, right? I'm telling you, I'm just going to quietly put a little public peer pressure on Grace because she's been talking about that for a while. At least five finished manuscripts and a novella series. Okay, come on, you've got a few plans. Like they don't all have to come out this year, but you know, maybe, maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit. <laughs> yes, Grace, um, Grace, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna talk about Grace for a minute. Sorry, Grace. Um, but, uh, yeah, your Earth Core series has, I don't know how many short stories out, Th four, four short stories that I'm aware of, and then the four novels, and my, you can put, you can correct me in the chat with the actual numbers, and then um, three more Earth Core novels in various stages of progress, am I correct? Am I completely making up numbers? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure there's three more in progress, various stages of progress. Anyway, so, uh, so I'm just saying there are some things that could be going on if you wanted them to. Um, and, uh, yeah. So anyway, everybody go check out the earth core series by grace. And I think there's a free short story on her website to get started. Maybe. Okay, finished Earth Core 7 last March. So that's three fairly, like not even like in draft in idea form. Okay, yeah, okay. Get to work. Oh, hi Joe, I didn't see you here. You have manuscripts with beta readers. Excellent, excellent. Starting a new project is like writing notes to myself until a story emerges, then go to outlining and more. Yeah. Yeah, and this is fun because everybody's got such drastically different ideas of how projects get started. And and hey, if it's if it's a system that's working for you, it's probably a decent system, right? So you know, this is another thing where it's real easy to get caught up in the, oh, I see how so and so does it. I should try that. Maybe maybe it works for them and not for me, which happens a lot. Um, but yeah, just uh, some people have wor sit down and work on a story idea for a long time and then outline it. And last night I have a story and I needed to write a, a short, it's, you know, it's going to be a two, 3000 words for, um, for my, uh, for one of my patron rewards. And, uh, the, <laughs> just sat down and I'm like, I have a character name and I have a setting. Let's see what happens. And, uh, so yeah, so that is definitely 
definitely a pantsing moment. It's a little more. I, I'm, ba I'm inherently a pantser who has learned how to make bullet points for the sake of efficiency. But yeah, still, still at heart, I'm a pantser. Mm. I have solid ideas for books eight and nine, although they send the team to space. So maybe I should just start a new series instead of skipping genres for that. that. Mm. I think we call that a spin-off series and you can spin off into another genre and then just go to town. Yeah. And then they happen to also meet Darcy and because, <laughs> because, you know, Pride and Prejudice in space. But, um, but yeah, if you're dealing with the same characters, that'll be, that'll be, that'll be fun. Okay. So, well, good luck with your, uh, with your story that's with beta readers, Joe. Um, yeah. So, okay. Magic in space. That's Star Wars. See, it's completely legit. It's been done a lot, actually. <laughs> so, Doctor Who is fantasy. It just happens to be in space. Yeah. This idea that all, all, all space is inherently sci-fi. That's not how that works. Yeah, so no geysers hey there are geysers in space it's just that once we get to the geysers it's technically no longer a space because you're on another planet but we positively have guided geysers on other planets we have observed them and so you can you can i don't know if they'd grant superpowers i i'm not aware of that it's probably so somebody should go and test that so yeah that's for those who wonder why why I'm making these weird noises, um, that's the premise of Grace's Earth Core series is um, geysers, which grant superpowers. So, okay. Um, yeah, I was actually starting a screen switch like 20 minutes ago. Let's see, can I... Doo -doo. That's not it. That's not it either. Huh. Okay. Well, let's see. Hey, look, there it is. Okay. So way back when um, we talked about just doing a brain dump of every idea you have and uh, uh, you're getting them out on, I had said I had heard of that being called an idea debt inventory, which sounded incredibly pressuring and um like oh no I, I need to write all these things before i die and that could be at any minute and you know it just was not a great phrase and kate uh i don't know if kate's in the chat or not but kate um uh, said that it was an idea cornucopia and i like that a lot better uh, so one of the things i will be doing um actually do i have it here i don't know let me find out um is reviewing my idea cornucopia and then prioritizing what is going to happen in this year. Um, we have, I, I went to 20 bucks to 50K and these are all the notes that I took. I mean, so many pages of notes here and I just, I have like an entire page. This just, let me see, can I get it in here? There we go. An entire page is just like the to-do list from, from just sitting in that conference and thinking of things. Uh, so, hey, I have to say it was a really good um, conference. So I talked to my husband while I was there, um, and all of these, all of these are the notes that I took there. So that's a lot because uh, I don't usually take a lot of handwritten notes. Oh, and I also took notes uh, in Evernote on my electronic devices. So there were so many notes. But I took, I told my husband, um, I called him while I was there and I was like, you know that phrase about if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. I said, I'm definitely in the right room here because so, so many people making such, you know, amazing success stories. So, um, yeah, I wonder what I did with my, it probably is in another envelope or another notebook entirely. <laughs> All right. Conferences are dangerous that way. Yeah, they really are. And I have been to a lot of writers' conferences. I, um, I really have, but I was hoping that one would feel a little bit different, and it did. It really did. There's a lot of stuff going on. All right, what did I do with my... Here's one. 
this is this is uh, an, an older copy. Um, it's just jotting jotting down things I want to work on, and like some things are, like I have Skellig written down. Skellig, there is no premise that goes with that. I just would like to do a story set on Skellig. I have wanted to do a story set on Skellig since before the Star Wars sequels <laughs> set, you know, went and filmed there. So um, clearly the, the time for that has passed because or I missed that, that boat because you know tourism skyrocketed after those and I probably could have had a little bit better marketing opportunity but you know the islands haven't disappeared I can still do it when I get around to it eventually but yeah I have just like I would like to do a story there and I might have a single sentence more on you know wouldn't it be cool if you had someone whose family you know went and became a monk on the island and so you can see the island from the mainland but you can't ever see him cool that's a good idea good job <laughs> I'll, I'll flush that out someday um, the poet size on there. Route 66 is on there. I have had an idea for a long time to do a series of stories set on Route 66 and uh, need to actually just sit down and make that happen. I like how I opened up a, I opened up a window so I could make notes, but now I'm just reading off a notebook, so that's not nearly as helpful. Um, Shard and Shield. Hey, I can cross that one off. I actually got that finished. Good job, me. So, hello, Kyle. Happy New Year to you as well. We were talking about plans and making plans and setting goals. And most specifically, making plans to meet goals. Because, you know, if a goal, what it was that somebody said the other day, a goal without a plan is just a wish. I'm like, okay, yes, but, um, but you know, in my day job, I, sp I spend, you know, basically I'm a professional goal setter and a professional goal plan maker. Uh, that's not how we would call that on the business card, but that's really what it is, is okay, this is what I want to see. Now, what are the 27 tiny, tiny, tiny steps that I can take to make that happen? And um, and there we go, so. Um, oh, Shyron Fox will like this one. It's on the on the list down here to do another Kitsune's Tales book. <laughs> so um, I the, the reason that has not happened yet is the plot has not come together for me. So, uh, but it's on the list. Um, I would like to do, I have a, uh, some gas lamp fantasy stories that I would like to keep going with. What is the next series after Shard and Shield? So the Poet's Eye is the project and I honestly don't know yet if it's going to be one fat novel or a series of shorter books. And I'm, uh, I was talking a little bit earlier, like, that's when I originally conceived of it, which has been a while back, um, novella series were a thing. And that's how it kind of came together in my head. Nobody's doing that right now. All the serials right now are very, very short chapters, like a few hundred words. And uh, so it, and it, do, it just doesn't want to do that. Um, you know, I could you can do it chapter by chapter, but that's not quite the serial format. Uh, and yeah, so we'll see how that see how that comes together. Yes, I know. Thank you. Yeah, I knew you'd be excited about the Kitsune book and I feel really bad putting it out there because now I have to deliver. But uh, but yeah, it's it's on my list and I, I've got individual scenes from it, but not a complete, uh, complete story. But we'll see where that goes. Um, I've had a novella finished for years and years and years, which I have just never put out because I'm a little scared to. So um, maybe maybe that'll happen this time. I'd like to continue the Robin Archer series. Um, that's my urban fantasy uh, half fae. Um, so that's, uh, um, oh my gosh, how many of those do I have now? I don't know. Do I have a half dozen of those out? I'm not sure how many of those are out. But anyway, I would like to continue that and maybe collect them so people don't have to just they keep finding them piecemeal, but may have them an easy way for people to get them. Skellig, like I already mentioned. Venice. I want to do a story set in Venice for no good reason except that Venice. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, at some point a plot will come together. And actually there's so much cool stuff in Venetian history that, this, that there's plenty of plot. There's, I just need to like put some people in it that the plot affects, right? So. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Uh, yeah, so um, 
Yeah, if, 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 I wonder what Laura is thinking has said no one ever, right? Uh, so I, I am happy to be like, yeah, guys, this is, this is where I am. Hmm, I got nothing. <laughs> so yeah, I do that. Uh, white Christmas and the Holiday Wars um, down here. This, I actually do have, um, I have all the titles for that. <laughs> I may not have all the stories for it. I have the titles for that. Um, but uh, White Christmas um, is a, Mrs. Claus is a Valkyrie who goes out to save Christmas story. That is already out as it's a short story and an audio uh, drama and it is already out. But I would like to do a year round series um, for those of, of shorts. So that's on my list of things to do, has been on my list of things to do for a while. Oh my gosh, how do these people put stuff out all the time? So I don't know. So, and then I need to do some things for my day job, uh, make some videos, make some online courses, uh, that sort of thing. So yes. Um, so yay, Shy, Shy Red Fox also approves of a story set in Venice. I know historical Venice is so cool. Yeah, so, and, 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 and oh, just here's my secret plan. Um, the Doge's Palace in Venice does private tours for people who have a good reason. Like you, there's a regular tour of the Doge's Palace, but then they'll take you into some of the back areas and the secret space places um, if you have a really good reason. And I'm pretty sure that researching a book is a good reason. And my goal is at this point, I'm gonna be like, I can have just enough street cred to be like, hey, could I get the secret tour? So we'll see. Also, that means we have to like, you know, be able to travel again and stuff, but it'll happen in the future. Kyle, yes, my frames. I have to lean close so you can see them. I was showing them off earlier. They're, they're a bunch of tiny dinosaurs with tiny, tiny Santa hats. So they're, I'm, it's Christmas is officially over, but I don't care. I'm wearing them anyway because they're still fun. So I will eventually switch to non-Christmas frames, but today is not that day. So, <laughs> yes. Um... Yeah. So anyway, uh, that is my, that is, that is my idea cornucopia, uh, that I will, I'm going to be sorting through and trying to organize into, uh, something maybe a little bit more structured than my usual haphazard production schedule, which is, Oh, what do I feel like working on today? Um, let's be honest, it's still going to be 98%. What do I feel like working on today? But I will have 2%, but how can I motivate myself to work on the thing that needs to be worked on today built into it? Uh, yes, tiny dinosaurs. I know, right? Ah, <laughs> so, um, I am such an adult. Um, so yeah, so I have, uh, I have three notebooks on my desk because I am an actual writer. Okay. So here, here are Oops, that wasn't anything important. It was only my mouse. So I've got three notebooks going on my desk. Uh, and I have a few more notebooks within easy reach <laughs> here. But I, if you weren't here earlier when I mentioned one of my goals this year, I don't actually make New Year's resolutions, but one of my goals is write in the pretty notebooks. Don't just hoard them and save them and keep them on a shelf to be pretty. We're going to write in the pretty notebooks and they are not going to be mint condition. They are going to fulfill the purpose of a notebook and they are going to live their notebook dreams of being useful. That is my plan. So, oh, hello, Megan. It's a good lesson. I just want to squeeze a little writing into every day. Hey, yeah. And I am not one of those people who writes every day. So I have great respect for people who do that. I actually probably should be better at that. Every day still sounds awfully, um, uh, restricting. That's not the right word. What am I trying to say? Um, I don't know if I can hold up to every day, but, um, there I knew Kate, are you in the stream? <laughs> Sorry, I just saw Shiren Fox gasps and hides pretty notebooks. I know, but I have been saved. I have pretty notebooks that I've saved for years. And what am I saving them for? Like, really, what am I saving them for? I know they're gorgeous. They're, they're inspirationally gorgeous. I should use them to inspire my work. That's my plan. So, uh, Grace, oh, Grace had to buy a new notebook because, okay, that's, that's amazing that you actually were using them. Yeah. Usually we, uh, we hoard, we hoard the notebooks and no way am I going to use all of them. I'm just not even pretending I'm going to use all of them. Um, there's my mouse. Okay. It's back now. <laughs> all right. Um, 
Yeah, and unlined notebooks for drawing. Elena gave me um, another nice notebook for Christmas too. So it is also going on the use the notebooks list, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, and I really, really, really wish I had better art skills because then I would use notebooks, you know, for doodling and I would then use doodling in marketing and all of these things. But oh, my right now, my, my art skills have the opposite effect the, the what you would want for marketing. <laughs> so yeah. The whole stash, there was not one without lines. Yeah, and I, my new thing a few, a few years ago when I discovered the, the dot journal, so you can unload the shows. Yeah, this. Um, it, I love those because they are not so, you know, rigid as like an actual lined notebook. Like you can, you can be a little more freeform with them and you can diagram in them, but the dots are there if you want to use them for, for lines for writing, or you can even sketch a little bit over them, not like real sketching, like people who want actual nice art when they're done. But for, hey, I'm gonna put stick people here to represent where things go, um, it works really well. I stick people several covers um, that I sent to, then I sent to my cover artist and they were able to interpret my stick person art and it was pretty amazing, so. Oh, Kyle, no, don't, don't even stress at all about going weeks without writing. Um, honestly, like I do that on the regular, like that is, uh, the writing every day is one way that some people do it. It is positively not the way I do it. And, uh, and it's, um, what I was just saying about, I'm, I'm not going to write every day. My goal is to write a little bit more regularly than I do, but going weeks at a time without writing. I do that all the time, like, and then I'll binge and then I'll go off again. So yeah, don't worry about it. Um, family and my boring day job get in the way. Yeah. Okay. So family probably should make a little bit of time for family. I don't know something about blood relations or whatever. Yeah. Um, <laughs> day job. It's good. Good to pay the mortgage. That help. That's an, that's a good idea. Grocery bills. Very important. Um, but one of the things that I am trying to work on and I guess I probably should have been more specific earlier um, I am very definitely one of these well I don't have a two-hour block so it's there's no point in getting started people and I need to be a little bit better about hey I've got 15 minutes I can get a hundred words down call it good you know kind of people and um, and I think that would be a help to me and I'm trying to reframe my brain on what is an acceptable block of time so, so that's where I am. And, um, so yeah, so don't, I don't think it's, I don't honestly, like I know so many people who don't write every day. <laughs> so that don't, I think that is a commonly, commonly given out piece of advice that maybe isn't such a great piece of advice, but use the time you have is a great piece of advice. There you go. All right. What else is going on in the chat? Um, Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> Shy. Why did I even reiterate all of that? Because Shy Red Fox said it in the thing. Um, you are not terrible. Write when you can. Carve out even 15 minutes for you to write. Absolutely. Yeah. Like just, you just need a little bit um, at, at a time and, and there you go. Um, yes. <laughs> all right. Yeah. And taking a sanity break for bad burnout. Yeah. Like, this is one reason that sometimes writing every day is not the best plan. And I don't know if that's what happened to you. I'm just saying that, um, you know, it's, you, you can, um, not everybody is cut out to write a hundred thousand words a month, every month. That's, that's a lot. <laughs> I would say most people are not built up real for that. So awesome okay yay made a resolution to finish a short story by the end of march yeah there you go pieces at a time and i will tell you you said i'm a very slow writer and i'm very detail oriented i will give you my general piece of advice this is without talking with you specifically i'm just this is what i have observed and shared over many years and many 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 writers and uh critique and coaching and mentoring and things um most of the time we're slow because we're trying to make a final draft in our first draft. Okay. Give yourself permission to have an imperfect first draft. 
first drafts are called one of two things. They're either called a first draft, which implies there will be other drafts later, or they're called a rough draft. And I feel like that's completely encapsulated in the name. I don't have to <laughs> explain that. The point is, if you're fussing about the details and you're trying to make everything super perfect in your first draft, you're just working way too hard. Let it go. And I know how absolutely non-intuitive that is. Trust me, I understand this. Ask me why I know these things, okay? Um, but just, just work on getting the first draft out and then your second draft and third draft can come back and make it really pretty. Don't worry about that so much the first time. And honestly, I think that is the number one reason people are slow. Not that everybody needs to be a fast writer. What are slow and fast anyway? There's a hugely qualitative terms that don't actually, you know, have a definition. But you can generally be faster than you are by letting your brain work on one thing at a time. Get the story down. Now get the words pretty. Now get the you know, pacing right. You know, those kinds of things. So there you go. There's my totally unsolicited advice for the night. <laughs> Grace says, do not think, only write. It's more fun that way. Honestly, it really is. You can get yourself, you know, just let yourself get into the story. Let, let yourself write in flow. The two things about writing in flow. One, you're way more productive and you have a ton of fun because you're actually just, you know, writing. And two, when you get done and you go back, it's actually better because you got out of your own way. I have frequently found that if I just made a conscious decision to just keep typing, don't go, don't back up, don't change words, don't stop and think about, you know, just go, go, go. When I go back, actually those scenes are frequently better because I got out of the way of my micromanaging. So yeah. And yeah, is that going to work 100% of the time? No, it is, of course, not going to work 100% of the time. But, but can you have more fun writing and write faster by not trying to do 16 things at once and make your fi first draft re look like a final draft? Yeah. Okay. There's the soapbox. Nobody asked for tonight. The end. Okay. <laughs> but thanks, Kyle. And please, please go do your thing and you know, get that, get, get in there, ha enjoy writing that story. You can do it and have fun. That's really why we're here. No matter what our career goals are, you know, hobby, side hustle, full-time pro, you know, whatever. Um, if you're not enjoying it, do something else. <laughs> okay? Like there's, there's lots better ways to, to, to make money. <laughs> okay. Really there are. So, um, so we better be doing this for something more than just money and probably want to have a little fun while I do it too. So yeah, Grace says it's always easier, easier to tidy up than you think. It really is. Um, and, and you can, the, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Weird. I know. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, Hey, um, Oh, hold on. it needs to be on an inspiration quote thingy. <laughs> we'll make a digital post-it note and in inspiration quote thingy, or I don't know, clip. I think you can clip it and highlight it in, in the Twitch, right? And make that happen. There we go. So, all right. Uh, I'm going to wrap it here and sit down with my notebooks where I will deface and defile these pretty, pretty notebooks and, and turn them into functional notebooks, which are also pretty. Uh, and and work on things. So, uh, yeah. Um, oh, let me put out, uh, put out the call. I am, uh, actively recruiting specific topics that people want to know about. Again, Saturday, I'm doing uh, the query letters talk with world anvil. Uh, so I'll see you there for that perhaps. Um, but, but yeah, if there's something that, that you want to know about for, you know what? I'm just going to say any, any part of the business side of creativity. Um, let me know because otherwise it's just me making stuff up and, and, and talking and hoping people like it, but I'm definitely would like to target this to actual questions if people have that. So, and I think that is it. Uh, let me see. I don't know if Elena is streaming tonight. Elena, if you're in the chat, tell me if you're streaming. Uh, and I'm going to, quietly, uh, quietly fill time for a second while she gets back to me. I don't know if she's in the chat or not. Um, all right. And check.
checking things. Okay. Where's my calendar? I've lost my calendar. All right. Oh, Elena is not streaming, still recuperating. That totally makes sense. So, yes, Shy, that is the Claire Letters Talk on Saturday's World Anvil stream. So, I will see you then. And that is it for tonight, everybody. Have an awesome night. Go make some plans at whatever level fits your goals. Pretend that came out much more coherently and inspirationally than it actually did. So... Okay. <laughs> All right. You all take care. Have an awesome night. Bye.